All right, good afternoon. Um, as uh, Allison said, uh, my name is John Elliott. I'm an assistant professor, uh, undergraduate program coordinator at Colorado State. Um, yeah, so CSU is Colorado State University in this region, not California State, wherever. So Col yeah, Colorado State University, uh, Department of Construction Management. A um, couple of my, uh, well, one of my colleagues, Jeff Wilkes, a uh, senior instructor in our program, is kind of handling more of the, uh, the civil uh, photogrammetry and UAV um, applications. And then Ian has been instrumental in this whole process. Um, so. Uh, what I want to talk about today is kind of how we've uh, decided to implement um, the Trimble technology. Uh, kind of the last four or five years, we've been working with Trimble um, to develop a, a partnership. And as of November of last year, um, we actually have a full-on Trimble uh, technology laboratory agreement. Um, and so we've been working with Trimble for four or five years, Ian, something like that. Um, but as we go through some of this stuff, um, it's really now how we at CSU working with Trimble hand in hand are trying to give the students this uh, experience um, before they uh, are going into the field. So a couple different interventions that we're using, um, classroom and lab interventions. So we'll talk about some management course um, stuff that we're doing, some field application courses, and then also these one credit boot camps, which um, trying to keep up with technology uh, is a challenge. Um, and uh, these five week uh, boot camps allow us to pilot some Trimble things in more of an experimental course uh, environment uh, and build on those so that we can put, take that piloted information and, and even the, the assignments themselves and move them into some of our more uh, full-time core classes that are estimating scheduling all those classes. Um, lessons learned, um, I'll spend a little bit of time in lessons learned just because over the past few years there have been a few um, things that I wish I would have known. <laughs> Um, certainly um, at the uh, university, college, and department level, everyone's different at their own institution. But there were a few things that really um, were surprising, uh, just the way that you know donations come in. And those of you that are probably more senior faculty have dealt with your own development people, and there's different things that happen at different universities, but that was one of the things that uh, we needed to set up a really um, strict protocol on for when we were bringing in Trimble Technologies um, and guest lectures and hardware and software tracking that information. So I want to talk a little bit about that. Uh, and then actually Ian and or Allison will come up and talk a little bit more about specifics on how to partner, um, what the partnership options are, and then uh, their internship and rotational program, uh, which a few Colorado State students are, are now starting to get into. So um, there will be time for questions at the end, but um, a little bit about our program for those that aren't um, super familiar. Um, as of fall of this year, these are uh, spring um, statistics, but we're going to be right uh, at the cusp of 800 students. Um, we're a capped program um, and a restricted major. So students enter the program in this pre-CM category you see up there. Uh, so we have 217 students that are in pre-CM that are admitted to CM. Um, and the way that they have to meet several requirements, math, uh, other prerequisites, but they move into our program uh, and then um, continue on after their first year for the third, fourth, second, third, and fourth year uh, sometimes fifth year, depending on the student uh, process and whether they brought transfer credits in or other things. Um, so we have 32 minors in CM. Uh, most of those students are in civil engineering, which is in another um, department. Uh, we have business students and um, interior architecture students. We don't have a full-blown architecture program uh, at CSU currently, uh, but our interior architecture program uh, does bring a lot of students our way um, from the... Uh, more of that side of the, of the AEC industry. Um, our graduate programs are a little bit smaller. Um, we've been um, seeing a little bit of a decline, as many of you probably have, in uh, applications. Not necessarily in applications, but in uh, commitments to coming to graduate programs. Um, applications are way up, but the number of people that actually commit is going down. So we have about 12 um, 
master students, and then we have two interdisciplinary PhD programs, one in uh, civil engineering and management, and then the other is in educational science with an emphasis in construction management. So students come into one of those tracks in our PhD programs. Um, the little stats at the bottom there, um, our students get out, uh, well, it's 93% uh, placement before graduation. Um, the ones that don't get placed are deciding whether they want to be work, operate a lift at a local ski resort or something. You know, if they want a job, they're getting a job. Um, Sixty-two thousand uh, dollars is the average, and 2.2 offers at graduation. So, um, hopefully, the market will stay the way that it is uh, for us. But um, that's kind of a real quick snapshot of our program. So I'll briefly touch on these, and just to be clear, from 15, 2015 to 2019, all these interventions are ongoing. So the first things that we started working with Trimble on were these guest lectures, and those are continuing through today in different classes. Um, in 2017 um, is when we really started, uh, I, I ended up teaching a um, kind of immersive um, class that's uh, in laser scanning, um, reality capture, and modeling, and I'll talk mo more in depth about that in a minute. Um, we started expanding the five-week, one-credit boot camp options, and, um, and that's, those are continuing as well. And then, as I said, um, in November, December of last year, the uh, Technology by Trimble Laboratory Agreement was put in place. And now we're actually rolling that out uh, fully as of uh, this spring. So. Um, we're in the process of moving through a bunch of different technologies, um, and I just want to touch on a few. This is a very short list of the, uh, of the applications, um, the software and hardware that uh, Trimble has graciously provided to us. Um, so uh, AccuBid um, and AutoBid, the uh, MEP stuff that Ian talked about, um, Sapphira for energy modeling, SketchUp, RealWorks Business Center, uh, robotic total stations, um, laser scanning data, Tecla. Those are all things that we're implementing in our program in, through different uh, interventions. Um, and I just want to say it's, uh, it's more than just a technology lab. Um, so, and I think Allison will talk a little bit about regional partnering um, with Trimble representatives in other places. But uh, guest lectures, um, hands-on trainings, uh, these field trips, we came down to the headquarters that Ian talked a little bit about right over here several times to get some hands-on training um, and have students see these applications in real life. Um, these pictures here are from one of the training sessions uh, where they were looking at the, uh, um, that's the SX-10 and uh, the HoloLens. Um, applications as well as some UAV stuff and, uh, and other uh, emerging technologies that are in the beta um, development stage. Um, and then we've done these, uh, these boot camps are interesting because they're a Trimble taught and CSU faculty liaison um, facilitated teaching environment. So Ian has been um, one of our main instructors and we're moving <laughs> into some, a few others um, coming up in the fall, which I'll talk about. But it's really uh, Trimble's um, classroom with a faculty member that's facilitating that in the background, uh, working uh, you know, the, the class schedules, the syllabus creation, the outlines, all those things. Um, so that's one of the ways that we put this stuff in. So to kind of de uh, delve a little bit deeper into the boot camps, um, the way that we offer them at CSU is uh, one credit, five weeks, as I said, one night a week for three hours. Um, and so we'll offer as many as three uh, sessions, so first, middle, or last five weeks of a 16-week semester. Um, and that's basically how we've decided to pilot some of this stuff uh, in the classroom and then take those interventions uh, into the, uh, the three-credit format and other courses. So those are the ones we've done so far, spring 18, um, spring 19, and then the one that's coming up in fall I'll talk about briefly at the end. Um, but overviews of laser scanning, all the technologies that um, 
Ian talked about, um, students get to see those. And then as we move forward, we've decided to do a little bit of a deeper dive into certain software applications um, to build those interventions that, that I mentioned earlier. So this is from the spring 19. Uh, this little building here um, is right next to one of our main CM buildings on campus. Um, it's a chapel that's on the historic register. Um, so we scanned the, proje the project um, and we brought that scan data into the classroom. Um, and then students worked with uh, point cloud registration, so aligning all the point clouds to create the actual reality capture. Um, that one was a little bit more advanced than we might want to incorporate in a five week. So Ian helped us with registration. They got to move around in the model. Um, and then we eventually started pulling data out of the scan directly into SketchUp. Um, and I'll talk about that here in a second. Um, so, <clears throat> In the classroom, this is actually the lab, the Trimble namespace over on the, uh, the left side of your screen there. Um, so Trimble Technology Lab, uh, and that's the, the Trimble um, logo here in the back, but you can actually look closely there. You can see one of the students, you know, with his arms crossed in the front, listening to that. Uh, it's probably to me talking before Ian got up there and got everyone excited. Um, so this is the students were in this lab, so we scanned it stitched everything together, and then uh, the students actually pulled uh, data from the scan and created a uh, basic floor plan, in this case, just the exterior of that room, um, segmented out portions of the cloud, and uh, through Scan Explorer in Trimble RealWorks, exported those into, uh, into the SketchUp software. And so just starting to uh, work through the process, um, and learning that in that five week um, intervention, uh, but then to incorporate that more um, into future classes. Um, with the help of some of the SketchUp gurus here at Trimble, um, our students were able to see the full process of taking the, scout, the cloud, excuse me, to a SketchUp model, um, you know, built, uh, drawn exactly or modeled specifically uh, to that spec, so. Um, so one of the main uh, <clears throat> full classroom interventions that we've done so far is in a graduate level class. But just to note that um, we try and market our 500 level classes to undergrads as well. So this was about 60% um, graduate students and 40% undergrads that were taking this as an elective just because they were interested in knowing more about the technology. Um, so I have syllabi and outlines up here, but we're uh, time-wise, um, we're not going to go through those today, but if you want to grab a hard copy, and I can also happy to share PDFs of those. Um, but this uh, class was really focused on point cloud utilization and then stakeholder um, interaction, basically, and stakeholder involvement. So as we worked through this, um, our, the students in the class uh, went out into uh, into the, the world, because this is a CM project, this is a CSU, CM department building that's in desperate need of renovation. Um, and they were basically going and talking to the faculty, um, our department head, um, facilities, City of Fort Collins, the Historic Preservation Commission, all of these different entities to kind of put the parameters around the project like you would in the real world. Um, model the existing structure, and then model a proposed interior renovation um, in this pre-construction class. Um, <clears throat> so one of the uh, interesting concepts about this was that the facilities uh, department actually is issuing the request for proposals on the exterior renovation of the project um, at, the, at the end of April, and they actually use the student model minus the point clouds to create the documents for that, which I'll, I'll show you in, in a second. Um, one of the important things about this was that uh, it's a partnership um, between Trimble, CSU, and a heavily um, involved uh, general contractor, Saunders Construction. Um, they work together to help us do this, so we're bringing multiple partners into the, into the classroom at the same time. Um, and uh, just for the sake of time, as I said, it's, it's a, a, a topic that students are interested in. Um, it's a real CM building. They felt like they're giving back to the department. 
Um, this building is, is very uh, much integrated into our uh, field application um, classes, uh, soils, uh, our materials and testing classes, our field management course, et cetera, is, are all offered in this, in this lab environment. Um, and for the sake of time, I'm just gonna pop out of this real quick and pull up, this is the student deliverable um, that they shared with, uh, with a bunch of individuals um, from the community, all the stakeholder groups that, um, that were involved in the process. So again, this is the student presentation at the end of the semester, and I'm just gonna buzz through this quickly, um, but they were able to pick a topical content area that was of interest to them. Um, laser scanning is uh, obviously used in historic preservation and, and reality capture in that way. Um, so they picked a special topic area. Uh, we, had a, a, we used uh, Revit, so we brought the model into Revit and built an existing, uh, an accurate existing as-built for this 1930s building, uh, and then also um, modeled the interior uh, potential renovation, which is a separate project. Those are the topical areas that were looked at, Tecla and others. And I'm gonna buzz through these because there's a lot of slides they did in our presentation, but one of our students um, was highly interested in historic preservation, so pulling the scan data, and, and uh, she wrote a historic report that uh, was actually added back into the uh, City of Fort Collins Preservation Commission's report. Um, they were highly uh, invested and interested in this project. There we are out scanning with the students. Um, one of the things that um, we, <clears throat> do, we did as part of this was take 3D photographs and stitch the, um, this is all in RealWorks that did this, but we used RealWorks um, to stitch the uh, point cloud, the actual laser uh, points with an RGB value from a photo to have a photorealistic 3D scan of the building. And then we segmented the cloud, so that's the interior of the building. Uh, exterior, surrounding site, and then um, cleaned out points, which were basically all the furniture, pieces of equipment, all that stuff. Um, and uh, we had 54 stations that we scanned. Um, students stitched in a few additional ones as we went through the process to give them that intervention. Um, there's just a quick picture of the floor plan. Uh, this is uh, interesting because it's our field management um, building. Um, you'll see a, a model of this here in a second, but students build this in field management. We have a scan of it as well, so we can do a little quality control and testing there. Um, just a section through the building, and we could take real-time measurements um, off of the, the photogrammetry that was in there as we were modeling the structure. All right, so to get into the scan, um, this is the scan of the full building, and there's the model underneath it, and it's hard to see it pop in there. But students um, used the scan, and in this case, we separated the scan into uh, red and green uh, for interior and exterior, and they modeled the structure uh, right in, in that space, in the 3D scanning space. Um, here's a section of showing some of the interior and how they actually aligned different structural members, uh, partitions, et cetera, stairs, to, to have an accurate model of what exists in the field. Um, there's another interior and exterior photograph, and that's the model that was transferred on to facilities management at CSU, and they used to create the, uh, the uh, actual documents for the RFP. And <clears throat> so I pop back into this. So this is the, uh, this is a couple examples of um, the facilities management department added um, their own MEP systems to the roof. We didn't know what those were gonna be at the time, uh, but as you can see, it's, it's basically our model um, with some you know, pretty additions to it to make it work for the, for the uh, project. And I'm gonna buzz through these real quick, but other field applications um, in our, uh, from the geo, um, the survey side, uh, this is our field management building model. Um, students are using the robotic total stations now to lay out the building in the lab. This is actually in the building that we just looked at that we modeled, um, and that's part of the structure, but they're using the, the robotic total stations to lay that stuff out. Um, 
And uh, the future would be in this class to expand to quality controls or anchor bolt layout and other things and check um, verification of the project um, in, in space. So students build this with varying levels of, of uh, experience in construction. And so to do a little uh, quality control, uh, field verification would be, uh, I think, a nice uh, potential intervention that we're trying to put in place in the next couple of, uh, couple of semesters. Um, so upcoming stuff, and then I'll hand it back over to Ian here. We're doing a, a CON 511, that project procurement um, 2.0. So we're trying to um, target a project right now with facilities where our deliverables can actually benefit the university um, while giving students a real hands-on experience with uh, laser scanning. Um, and we have a heavy civil focus boot camp, and these are, <clears throat> are some of the um, week to week things, and I'll bust through these quickly, um, but Jeff Wilkes, the person who couldn't make it today, um, he's really leading this side of the, uh, of the boot camps. Um, so he's now uh, FAA certified UAV pilot, and so basically bringing that photogrammetry, and this is a week by week breakdown, um, we're scanning uh, photogrammetry um, via the UAV, and then bringing that into um, these different Trimble products to basically allow students to, um, to experience that side of the georeferencing um, drone applications, uh, things of that nature. So they're gonna put in a roadway or utility uh, corridor um, to model uh, what's gonna happen and pull off their quantities, and, and et cetera, as part of this uh, boot camp. And then they'll actually take that back into um, the uh, GNSS stuff, the robotic total station, just some field layout to kind of bring it back to the, the boots on the ground um, and then close it out with the uh, emulating and things like that. So dozers, graders, all that stuff. So. And everyone's favorite lessons learned. <laughs> this was, uh, uh, it's been challenging, um, but highly rewarding as well. Um, and so I just wanted to put these up there and I'll just talk about them really briefly. I obviously, um, I'll be at ASC this week. I came down from Fort Collins, so I don't have my badge yet. But if you want to catch up with me there, I'm happy to talk in depth about how we did this um, and uh, how we've decided to incorporate it. One of the things I want to say is that Trimble has been um, extremely uh, flexible in the way that we choose to incorporate the technology, software, hardware into our curriculum, and that's super helpful. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, you know, there's, we have ideas, and then I talked to Ian about how we can make that work, and he, he knows the background of how to make that happen. Not that Ian's gonna be your rep, because he's mine, because I don't want him to go anywhere else. Uh, but, um, so the gift agreement um, language, uh, had to go through the full full court press at um, at the university legal, um, so that took a little while. Um, it is really critical to have a department um, IT uh, or a college or university IT rep that's uh, or a point of contact, I should say, that's really willing to help you with this. Um, you know, Trimble doesn't operate in the semester or trimester world. So we are trying to put together a protocol of July 1 and, uh, and January 1 for updating all softwares so that in between our 16-week semesters, you know, we can't be pulling in all these updates. Um, the big one there um, is the GOT admin rights. Um, our college is very strict about who has administrative rights on the computers. So if we have a little issue, it's a chain of command to get somebody to come over to the lab and adjust something that Ian or I could adjust if they just give us administrative rights. So just be prepared for that, a lot of testing. Um, points of contact, Trimble has acquired and works with tons of different applications. And so um, the challenge that we faced in our department, one of the challenges was that faculty get excited. I got excited, oh I want to use this software, let me call our help desk and let me call this person at Trimble, it needs to be, uh, there needs to be a protocol for points of contact, so you're not getting 25 different 
people contacting your IT department because they get really cranky about that. And it's, so it's very, um, that slows the process down. So trying to have that protocol in place is important. Um, and then I'm done now, Ian, but just last thing, uh, hardware requirements. Um, Talk with your Trimble folks, depending on what software and hardware applications you're going to be using, um, if you partner with Trimble, to make sure you have the right requirements in your labs. Um, and uh, that's basically it for me. Sorry to go through it so quickly. Um, Ian and Allison um, have a couple of kind of ways to partner, and then Q&A if there's time, I think, at the end. Come on up, Ian. <laughs> OK, so I know a lot of you think this is great. It's very Trimble-centric, but uh, so what? <laughs> uh, so we want to give you guys a couple options on how to kind of get in involved if you aren't already. So uh, we do offer our significant dis discounts on hardware. Uh, they can do lab licenses for entire labs, uh, a couple different programs, depending on what the software is and the division. Uh, they have a couple different uh, ways to do that. So. As you're talking to uh, some of the experts out here, we can help you out with that, uh, trying to get those narrowed down. Uh, Trimble demo days on campus, this is kind of how I got started with uh, John and CSU. And we're lucky enough to get close by, and I can make a quick drive up there from the house and, and help out as much as we can. Um, the boot camps, obviously, I think those have been a big hit, and it's been uh, great for us to experience. And we've actually got quite a few uh, groups out of the university for that as well. So uh, it's been, uh, I think, really beneficial on that side. Um, Individual products, so that'd be kind of a triple tier three, triple technology lab. I don't know if you want to jump into the tiers on that. Sure, sure. So Trimble Technology Lab um, really at its core is essentially an agree a gift agreement uh, to receive a bunch of Trimble solutions from us and for you to name a physical space in your building a room. It's usually a computer lab, but it could be a different type of lab, the Trimble Technology Lab. Uh, at CSU, it's called Technology by Trimble, but it's usually a Trimble Technology Lab. We kind of have three tiers. Um, really, it's the top two that I want to speak to more specifically. Uh, the top one is we may get an in-kind gift of software and hardware. That hardware can be gifted or discounted, and a tier two is just software only. So, um, so yeah, if you're interested, um, you can... Uh, I hate to say this, but you can email me. Um, uh, there are two of us who at education at um, who will check that email. And just a word of warning that we have a very long pipeline right now of schools that we're working on, and there are only two of us kind of working on it. So it takes six to eight months to get a gift agreement through all of the attorneys uh, and things sorted out. So it requires essentially us, us to have an initial discussion, an hour-long discussion. We kind of present everything to you. You decide as a group of faculty who's going to be your faculty champion. Uh, if you decide to move forward, you submit a proposal to us. We vet that proposal. We get back to you. If we decide to go ahead with it, we start to build a list of solutions. At the same time, we sign an NDA. We get a gift agreement into your attorney's hands, and we just keep on chugging until it's done. So anyhow. OK, so also internships, and uh, there's a rotational program. Uh, the rotational program, we've actually uh, hired a few CSU grads to actually go through that. Great program. They actually do a two-year stint here at Trimble, six months in four different divisions at Trimble doing four different types of roles. So product management to support to uh, development and R&D. So it gives them a great opportunity to see all the, the different uh, aspects and uh, you know, other operations they can get into and pick the best fit. Uh, internships are posted you know, all the time up here and all around the country, all around the world. So a couple websites that uh, John will get you links to here in the slide deck. And the most important thing, I really want to get you guys some hands on because this is, you know, this is why I came to Trimble is I call them toys because I play with them all day long. But these are really cool solutions that will definitely drive the construction industry. So if you have questions, Allison and I and a few others will be at the AAC convention all week. So we can answer questions there. And we can drive a few questions here through, uh, through the uh, hands-on opportunity. But I really want to get you guys out and get you playing with the, with the equipment. And Why don't we take like three minutes to answer some general questions that everybody might want to know the answer to. And then we'll head right on out. Does that sound good? Questions? Now's your chance. What's your timing? I'm sorry. How Go ahead. do you decide between uh, in-kind gift versus discounting the hardware? 
Um, it, it really depends on the hardware, to be honest. So we kind of have a list of things that I, on hardware, I have to roll that up to a, to a sector VP for approval if it's gifted. If it's discounted, no problem. We have just standard discounts on different pieces of hardware. Uh, but it really depends on the list. Some things are much easier to get than others. You can imagine that you know, um, you know, our best laser scanner is you know, a $70,000 list price. And so it's a little harder for me to get those. Just you know, give me one of those every week. You know, like, yeah, no. <laughs> so, so yeah, we, we kind of we massage as much as we can. It depends on. It's tricky. How much is the uh, discounted version? As in, what percentage? Is it depends on the piece of hardware. Okay. So the higher priced pieces of hardware, less discount, to be honest. So, generally speaking, yeah. Do you guys run these programs with your Spectre brand too? Yeah. Yep. Mm. Yep. So they've got uh, they've got a blue line of total stations, and then all the lasers and line lasers and slope lasers. So they have some educational programs as well. What they do is separate from what we do as a corporation, though, just FYI. But we do try and bring our partners, uh, worldwide partners, on board whenever we can, especially to help support whatever we're doing after it's been established. Because we, can't, we can be in Fort Collins easily, but we can't be in Atlanta easily or you know, in San Francisco. So we find some, a partner regionally who's willing to step up and help train or you know, troubleshoot things or whatever it might be. So. Yeah, you had a question over here. I don't want to forget you. I was just wondering what the timing is for playing around and looking at your. Uh... I don't know what time is it. So, I think we have an hour. Or yeah, so? we've got about an hour. We want to try to get you back on the road before four thirty. I think the roads are doing okay. They're okay, but we might want to leave about four fifteen. Okay. Just question back we want here. To make sure you guys get back safe and sound. Uh, yeah. what software to introduce your students because honestly speaking it seems like so many competing yep. products out there at this point and we're trying to juggle with this ourselves so I was just curious how you make those decisions. Yeah um, so we have that same issue um, where there's a lot of different supplier or uh, software companies that you know vying for the time um, we found that um, there are certain programs that we do incorporate, uh, Procore and other things, but with the Trimble being more of a universal, I mean, across so many different classes and, and one point of contact, that was in our curriculum committee how we kind of you know, thought this makes a lot more sense than trying to keep up with all these other, um, you know, different cloud-based software as it come up and change. I mean, there's probably five apps that have been um, released since you arrived in Denver, right? I mean, it's it's really hard to keep up with that. So that was really one of our big deciding uh, factors. And so we don't push anybody out. Like Assemble, um, they do a lot of, uh, uh, you know, BIM-based estimating stuff. And they can come in and present, but when it comes to getting that stuff into our actual computer labs, um, having a single point of contact that's, was just one of the big, big motivators for us. Yep, here. On average, uh, the question to actually both of you, uh, on average, when you're teaching students uh, a certain software package, how long it takes and what's the maximum size uh, of students within a class? Oh, the class size? So, um, because the classes, the boot camps are um, really driven more by the hardware and software application. So I usually bounce that off of Trimble first. And we've done 20 to 25 students in the lab, uh, and we group them up. And so um, it's surprisingly, uh, I was surprised at how quickly the students were able to work through the software. So um, in the RealWorks, which is one of the more advanced softwares, um, we didn't spend time doing all the scanning in class. They would do one or two scans and then stitch those in. So, you know, that was probably a half hour to 40 minutes, um, but they got to see the process two times. And then starting the next class, we would give them all the scans stitched together and they could start doing the sketch up stuff. So, how many hours did that take you overall? Um, how was it probably about double the, I just assume it's going to be double the time for the class for prep. Mm -hmm. Do you do any preparatory work in advance of providing the students with documentations to read ahead 
Yeah. So we give them links. Uh, we try to give them links before class as well. So if they wanted to go study up before, I don't know what any of them did, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we try to give them yeah. that. And then yeah. I, I we didn't give them any reading assignments. <laughs> <laughs> I usually try to, if it's going to be a class above 10 people, I try to bring in another proctor or somebody else to help, you know, go troubleshoot on the computers because somebody will get stuck somewhere. So instead of them pulling down the entire class, we've got folks that are kind of jumping in behind to make sure it's running smoothly. And then the, I always call it an easy bake oven. I always, always have some data that's ready to go. So they can sample on this one, doesn't work out, locks up, whatever. We can trade that out with the, the already baked version and they're, they're yeah, still rolling. A good example of that is, um, you know, students, you know, are trying to register several point clouds together and they screw it up, right? So it's a hard process to learn and then they go through it again and they get it right. But to make sure that it moves um, into the next step effectively, like Ian said, there's a already prepared, okay, save that and that might be your deliverable for today's assignment. But now let's all start from the same point again so that we're not losing people in the process. One more, right here. Are we in Europe? Are we in Europe? We have many officers across the world and a lot in Europe. Our, our core team is here. We do have one person who is out of our Helsinki office who's on the education team and kind of does a lot of this outreach in Europe. So yeah, it just depends on what you're interested in and kind of the ways you want to engage. But. But yeah, we have offices in Europe and people all over the place. Right, right. Yep. Great.